Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt Pittman of Meat Church. I'm here in my outdoor kitchen in Waxahachie, Texas. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a barbecue classic. We're gonna make great pulled pork smoking uh, these prairie fresh pork butts on our mill scale 94 gallon offset. I'm teaching you time and temperature so you can apply this lesson to any type of cooker that you guys have. Stick around. All right, guys, we're back. This is gonna be very straightforward, very easy. It's hard to screw this up, to be real honest with you. So again, we've got these really beautiful, prairie fresh, all natural pork butts, which I can tell you from experience, taste amazing. Minimal preparation. With my boning knife, I'm just gonna trim off kind of anything that's excess. So anytime you've got something like this sticking up, that's gonna kind of burn up in the cook. So I'm gonna remove it. And if you see any excess fat that you wanna get rid of, you know, be sure to just cut that off. You need a pretty sharp knife and I can tell you right now, I wish this one was a little sharper today. But we'll get through it. There's a fair amount of, uh, fair amount of fat here around what's known as the money muscle. Why do they call it the money muscle? Because when you compete, this is what you turn in if you want to get paid. But hey, if you're making this at home and you go to pull the pork, make sure to make your sandwich out of that and you can make your neighbors and friends out of this part. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this fat off because it's a little excessive. And you could do this after the cook, but it's just gonna render out a lot of, um, you know, kind of nasty stuff you don't need. So I choose to get rid of a bunch of it and expose the meat now, um, because that way you can apply more seasoning to the meat that's gonna be the best bite. There's usually a pretty big fat cap here on the back. Some people season this, cook it like this, and you can literally pull this off at the end of the cook. But again, just like the other fat, I like to remove most of it to expose the meat. Uh, this is kind of where you've got the tasty, we call bacon underneath here, really good meat. So I think this is better if you remove this and season it, so I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna be ready to put a binder on it and, uh, and season it. I'm just laying my boning knife flat and just kind of shaving across here pretty good lesson. You should use a sharper knife than I've got going today, but I trimmed uh, a dozen briskets with this last night and I should have grabbed one that was a little bit sharper, but like I said, we'll get through it. All right, you don't have to get all of it off. So I just like to get it nice and trimmed down. One more piece here on the top. I'm going to cook two today because we're feeding a lot of people and if you're going to fire the pit up, why not? But I will complete the prep on this one and then I'll come back and finish this one. What's next? Some people just season, we can do that. But where I grew up in the South, we slathered with yellow mustard. So I'm gonna do that. The last bit of mustard I've got here from Whataburger. Why Whataburger? Cause we're in Texas, why not? You're gonna get messy here and that's okay. That's what's fun about it. Just slather it on. This is optional, you know, you could use an olive oil. Um, you could use nothing. A lot of times I don't use a binder. If you've got plenty of time, the rub will adhere anyway. Um, and so you can just give yourself some time and let the rub sweat out and you don't need a binder. But this is kind of like a nostalgic thing for me. This is what we did when we were younger in the deep south, what I grew up on. So I like to do it. And if you don't like mustard, don't worry. It doesn't affect the flavor profile. This is gonna cook for, you know, I don't know, 10 hours depending on your size of your butt. So you're not gonna taste this. It's just a, just a way for the seasoning to adhere to the rub. The seasoning to adhere to the pork butt rather. All right, wipe it off in here, get a towel. And hey, we're shooting cooking videos, so I'll throw this stuff away when I'm done. So don't sweat how clean we're being or not. All right, what are we gonna season with? We got a lot of choices in the meat church arsenal. And you know, when you guys make pulled pork, use whatever you grew up on or what's near and dear to you. 
Um, we also have an injection, but I'm not injecting this today. I'll kind of show you all later why I don't think that's always necessary. You can inject if you want. But we're going to season just really liberally with our gospel all-purpose rub. It has an amazing color. Uh, a lot of people call it the best color in barbecue. It's bright red. You know, this takes me back to keep, keep referencing growing up in the south. We're going to get a really nice sweet pro uh, flavor profile out of this. That's what we're shooting for. So when you, when you make barbecue, you're the one that gets to decide what direction you take with the protein and where it ends up. And, and this step right here is where you make the biggest difference in that. You know, what you choose to season it with is really going to determine which route that protein's going to go. So this is a proven winner, but our honey hog's really good um, as well. Our holy gospel, but I love the gospel. Can't go wrong. You've got to give yourself at least 15 minutes for this to sweat out. If you've got more time, go 30, 45 minutes. Let it adhere. It's also okay to do it the night before if you want. It won't hurt it. This is a big old piece of meat. So perfectly all right to do prep in advance if you would like. But give yourself at least 15, 20 minutes. And yes, I went liberal. Again, it's huge. Reminds me of cooking a prime rib. You know, it's a big old piece of meat. You're only seasoning the outside. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work on this other one. And I think you know, probably give it 15 minutes or so. This will sweat out the, the uh, salt and the seasoning kind of pulls the moisture out. When it all looks nice and wet, we're going to be ready to put it on the pit. So I'm going to work on this other one, and we'll see you guys back here in 15 minutes. Nothing says summer's coming like a good old sweaty butt. Or two sweaty butts. These have been sitting here for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and you can see they've totally sweated out. The seasoning's adhered, so I'm ready to cook them. I'm cooking on an offset, so I'm going to go with a water pan optional uh, we're going to go with apple juice you put whatever liquid you want in it that's just to add some moisture to your cooker we're running a good clean fire here on the mill scale you notice you don't see any thick white smoke that's a key to good barbecue i'm going to set it up here on the deflector plate and i'm going to put these in so today we're cooking at 275 degrees with hickory I grew up on hickory um, in the south, and so that's something I like to cook with. This would also be great uh, with pecan. Uh, some people like to put some cherry wood in it. So those are going to be rolling in the smoke bath for quite a while, depending on the size of your butt. You know, it could be an 8, 9, 10 hour cook. Um, I try to cook these a little hotter. You can cook anywhere from 225, 275. I know people that cook even higher than that. That's okay. The higher you cook, the more attention you need to pay to it because the cook can potentially get away from you. Uh, so I try to cook as quick as high and quick as I can, but still yield a great product. So go wh where you feel comfortable. I'm rolling 275. Um, I think I'm going to be, it's two step cook. We're going to be in the smoke for probably five to six hours until I get an amazing looking bark. Um, and once I have that bark using a thermopin instant read, I'll check the temperature and probably in the 165 degree ish range, We'll wrap it, go to phase two of the cook, which will be a little shorter, um, and then it's gonna be time to eat. So these again, will be in here five, six hours. I'll probably spritz them one or two times. I'll show you all that, but this is real time today. It's early morning here. We're gonna roll this all day, not cheating anything. So I'm gonna let these roll. Uh, I'm gonna go work on some briskets and I'll see y'all back here in a bit. All right, guys, we've been cooking these pork butts for about four hours. Uh, I spritzed them at the two hour mark and I'm gonna spritz them a second time. And another tip, anytime uh, you're cooking big meats on a cooker, it's good to know your cooker and learn if there's hot spots or not. So sometimes I'll rotate meat depending what I'm cooking on. So clearly the fire and heat source is coming from this side. So I'm gonna shift these butts around one time. And you can see that they've kind of dried a bit, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna spritz them with apple cider vinegar. This is a hog sprayer, works really good, a nice fine mist. Just get them nice and wet. Spritzing is optional, but a lot of people like to do it, and I've just always done it on pork. All right, those look great. I'm gonna let them keep cooking, still rolling at 275. We're gonna be a good another hour or so until the bark gets to looking like I want. And then we're going to wrap. I'll see you guys then. 
What's turned out to be a beautiful day here in Texas, and my kitchen smells awesome. Let's check in on the pork butts. Woo! Look at that. Man. They don't call the gospel the best color in barbecue for nothing. That looks awesome. So you see it you know, got really mahogany, then started to turn dark. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap. You know, Some people cook them further. Uh, some people don't wrap at all. But when I've developed a really nice bark, um, it's taken on enough smoke for me. It's been about six hours or so. So we're going to wrap it. And much like ribs, you wrap for a couple reasons. You can put things in the wrap. But you know, when we wrap this with foil, it'll actually speed the cook up. Um, so it'll help us get through the second phase a lot quicker. Some people just wrap like this, that's fine. There's a lot of fat in this, and so that will render out and you have a ton of juice and it'll be really good just like that. Um, I'm gonna go a step further, as I often do. And I'm gonna put some of my hot rub, our honey hog hot, which is jalapeno, it could be called honey hog jalapeno. We're gonna put a little, little dousing of this on there. It's a little windy here today. This is something that I do in competition and has worked well for me, so I'm gonna do it in my backyard too. Nice heavy coat. Some down in the pan. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with, let's do the butter, yeah. Let's do some, uh, these are slices of a, of a really good butter. Butter is your friend in barbecue, trust me. And if this doesn't look healthy, I'm not here to help you lose weight. And then I'm gonna go a little brown sugar for a little sweetness. So we got a little sweet heat working here. You could pour some mixture in here as well. Some people like to pour a juice in, something like that. I'm not gonna do that today, but with all my recipes, make it your own. Play with it, that's the fun in it. Figure out what you like. Um, you know, use whatever seasonings you like, whatever flavors you want to accomplish what you're trying to do, but this is gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up tight. I'm gonna do this with both butts that we have going. We're gonna go back in the offset, the same temperature. Now I don't have to do anything. I'm gonna maintain that 275, and I'm gonna ride on through until this is probe tender. Using my Thermapin instant read thermometer, I'm gonna check this periodically, um, and when it's, you know, just over 200, it's probably gonna be tender and done. We're gonna pull it off and, and go from there. So back in we go. And I'm gonna get to work on this other one and see y'all in a bit. All right guys, we've been cooking these Prey Fresh butts on the mill scale all day. We're at about nine hours right now. They're done, and how do you know that? Well, using our instant read, I like to poke a couple different spots on the butt and that goes in with no resistance at all. And that's reading 202. I'll usually check a few spots in the different muscles. That's 201 and there's just no resistance so you know it's done. I'm, what I'm feeling is like a toothpick going in a cake. Just go, I mean that just like falls right in. Easy. So we need to pull these off and let them rest. They're gonna rest for a while, and we're actually gonna pull all the au jus out into a fat separator, separate that out. Uh, so after these rest, we'll come back uh, so we can make sandwiches and eat. We've been cooking this pork butt all day, and I can't wait any longer. Prey Fresh butt looks amazing. Uh, the mill scale did a great job all day, and I'm ready to eat, so, so let's go. You get the clean bone pull, you know you're doing good. And that's some good meat right there, right off the uh, right off the bone, I love that. I like to pull from a couple places, but man, you can see the smoke. Look at that. I told y'all earlier, I'm gonna go for the money muscle right here. So you obviously can get some great, some great meat out of that. I always wanna get some with some bark on it. Ooh, look at that, nice and juicy. Beautiful smoke there. I'm not gonna make y'all wait to pull this whole thing. I do wanna show you something though. I told you I captured all that juice. So one thing I like to do is I put it in a fat separator. And so as I start to pull all of this meat, um, I'm gonna actually pour the good stuff back in 
And this stuff is great for when you're making sandwiches. So you can just dredge this stuff through here after you pull it and it's gonna be really, really juicy. And you don't even necessarily need a barbecue sauce if you want. We've sold, uh, we've served pulled pork like this at, at people's choice events. And when it's really juicy like this, people give you just like rave reviews. So a little tip for you there. Um, but anyway, I can't wait too long to, to get in to eat this. So, you know, you can take this a lot of ways. You can make a standard sandwich. You can top it with slaw. You can use sauce or not. Um, I'm gonna get in here and get me a piece with some bark on it and just try it just like it is before I choose to sauce it. Not takes me back to being a kid. That's good. Mm, super good. I mean, it was simple. You know, we didn't do too much to it. We seasoned it, um, you know, put it in the smoke all day, didn't inject it or anything. And uh, this thing is juicy as all get out. But if you like to go with the sauce, we got a vinegar sauce here and um, more of a Kansas City style sauce here. I like vinegar sauce. If you want to give that a shot, you know, make these recipes your own. Damn. It's been a long day here in Texas. Um, could be just like we live on a racetrack, but whatever. Never fails when shooting videos, people drive by going crazy. I'm gonna pull the rest of this. My family's inside waiting to have dinner. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us and we'll see y'all next time.